music for you and um, starting off with a piece by Olivier Messiaen, a French composer, very uh, avant-garde really. And uh, he had this strange condition called synesthesia and he could uh, see colors with sound. So this piece is called The Dove or the Holy Spirit, La Colombe, and its colors are orange tinged, tinged with violet. And now, because it's been raining so hard these last few days, this is the raindrop prelude of Friedrich Chopin.
maybe maybe the sun will come out. And now we have the joy of hearing Allison on a, an American folk hymn. It's called What Wondrous Love Is This? spiritual arranged by John Carter. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart.
Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Allison. And welcome to each of you to worship at West End Church today. It is so good to see all of you and to know that wherever we are and wherever we are on life's journey, God is with us. I see a few of you have become advanced Zoom users since we last met, uh, and I'm enjoying your virtual backgrounds this morning. For those of you uh, catching up to Zoom, please make sure that you have the chat window to the right side of this uh, screen open. We'll be posting the prayers and liturgy into that throughout the service. So make sure that that's open. If you can't see that, you can email Reverend Sam or uh, Deacon Esau Reyes Casante, who will be our tech support and ministers of engagement in this new world throughout this service. Beloved, wherever you are, put your feet firmly on the floor beneath you, knowing that several layers down, that floor is connected to the earth, the earth that springs forth with new life even now, that promises hope, that springs forth with beauty, and that reigns with the love of God that has flown throughout all time and will indeed continue carrying us in that love and hope of our faith. Come, let us worship our God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Even though you are muted, we can still say this together. Holy One, at times you feel so far away. We confess that this is not an indictment of your presence, but a failing of our own perception. We who are so quick to feel your absence acknowledge that we need you now more than ever. Our world, our world does not look like our world right now. We need your vision. Our health is at risk. We pray for your healing mercy. We are lost without you. Come, great shepherd. Click on that. You are using us. the device audio. Diane happens to speak. Comfort and peace. We pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. And now, my friends, far and wide, new and old, people who have been with us from the beginning and people who are joining us for the first time today, I want to offer you this assurance of pardon. You are loved and held, and you have a community that loves and holds you as well. And now I offer you the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. With you and, and also with you all right kids now is your moment so push your parents away from the screen gently not too much and if you have a sibling find a way to share the screen somehow in church school this morning that was that was a struggle for some of you so for our children's moment today we're going to just start by wiggling a little bit so jump up stand up and just move your body, start with your toes, start with your feet and your ankles and your knees and everything that touches the ground, just give a little wiggle and see what happens to the rest of your body when you wiggle your feet. See if it reaches up your legs and up your hips and all the way up and just wiggle and move your whole body and your arms and your hands and see how your body needs to wake up today. See how we can move together. And so as we think about waking up our bodies and moving, and all of the things that we like to do outside. This is a moment where we can thank our bodies because at this moment, we have a little fear around getting sick and a little precaution. We take special care so we don't get sick. But one of the things that I, I don't want us to forget is that our bodies are doing everything they can to keep us healthy. So in this moment today, I wanna just thank our bodies. Thank our bodies for their completeness, for everything they do. Thank our bodies for all the things they're trying to do, all the things they're doing without our even knowing. So let's take a breath in and out and say after me, thank you, body. And you could think of the individual parts too. You could think of your ears, think of your nose, how it wiggles. Think of your eyebrows. 
and thank the little parts of your body that you might not think of every day. Thank you ears, thank you eyebrows, thank you bridge of my nose, thank you chin. I don't think of my chin very often. It doesn't do much, but it's helping just as every other part of my body is. So let's say a quick prayer of thanks as we go on. God, we thank you for waking us up yet again today. We thank you for getting us here to church together. We thank you for how our bodies care for us in the ways that we know, in the ways that we don't. And may our bodies teach us and surprise us even more than they are today. May we learn even better from our bodies as we go. Thank you, God. Amen. Will is muted on my screen. No. Yeah, we can't hear Will. <laughs> well, we have just prayed the prayer of preparation in preparation <laughs> for praying the prayer of preparation. So would you now join me in the prayer of preparation found to the right side of your screen? <laughs> Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes to us from the prophet Ezekiel. This is the 37th chapter, a familiar story, but listen anew for God's word today. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones and he led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. And God said to me, mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, Oh Lord God, you know. And then God said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And so I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, a skin had covered them, but there was still no breath in them. And then God said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as God commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude, and they said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you will live and I will place you on your own soil and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. This says our God. Our second scripture lesson is the 130th Psalm. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. 
My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord, there's, ste there's steadfast love. And with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thank be you. to our God. Picture this, exile. The ancient Near East, the sixth century before the common era, a dusty valley full of dry bones. A man called Ezekiel, himself an exile, who is far from the home and the daily life that he loved. Ezekiel is walking with God in this place of the dead. It's the fifth year of that famous Babylonian exile when the ancient Hebrews were cut off from Jerusalem, their temple and their places of prayer, and they were ordered out. This isn't the city they knew and loved anymore. It's different. And you cannot be here, not, not, not as you were. In exile, some of them begin to have strange visions and their cries of lament go up to the Almighty day and night. Remember that in ancient temple Judaism, Yahweh, God, wasn't just worshiped in the temple, but God lived there in the temple too. And when the ancient Hebrews were cut off from their temple, they believed and they felt that they were cut off from God. God did not travel with them in the tabernacle as God did with Moses. For God at this point in the story had taken up permanent residence and had a mailing address, Temple, Jerusalem, Northern Kingdom. And exile from Jerusalem meant to those ancient refugees, exile from God. Can you imagine? How devastating is that? Now this man, this man called Ezekiel that we heard about this morning, he has a slightly different notion of God. And it begins here in this valley of death, this place that is beyond sickness. Here in this place of fear and loss, Ezekiel has a vision of new life for old bones. And more than just life, Ezekiel's vision is around breath, ruach in the Hebrew. The same word that is used at the beginning of Genesis to describe the breath, the spirit of God who hovered over the waters. The breath of cre creation itself. At God's command, breath came from the four winds and it filled the lungs of those who were slain and, and they lived. Now remember, this is the same God who everyone else thought was supposed to be living back in Jerusalem, back in that temple, that permanent place. So how'd she get here? What a surprising place to find God here, out in the wilderness, here in exile, here among the dead. This fifth Sunday of Lent takes us to this fifth year of the Babylonian exile in part because here the story of our faith, where we are in the liturgical year, we're about to enter some very dark days. From today's death and resurrection as remembered by Ezekiel to next Sunday's triumphal entry into Jerusalem with palms waving high, and then immediately into the passion and the story of a last supper on Thursday and the last breath on Friday. Here, Lent is doing what we knew we had to do when we set out from those ashes so many days, a lifetime it surely feels ago. The lectionary and the prophets tell the story of death and rebirth of the cycles of time, of alpha and omega, of living and of dying. This is a story that can be hard to hear in the best of times, and perhaps downright impossible in times such as these times, when many of us may be feeling a bit like exiles inside of our own homes, cut off from the city and the lives we love. We can talk about dead bones in any usual time, but maybe this isn't the moment when death is actually all around us. Maybe stories like Ezekiel's cut a little too close to the bone, hitting us just 
a little too close in our homes. In the midst of all this constant change these weeks, we, West End Church, have been focused on the words of the Lord's Prayer as a way of steadying ourselves in one of our faith's greatest traditions. We have also been breathing new life into this most ancient prayer of Jesus by looking at the language and the petitions of that prayer. From our valley of dry bones today, I ask you to join me in considering the second sentence of that prayer, the one many of us say something like, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Now going with the theme of Ezekiel's exile and also our own inside, I want us to think geographically today. I invite you to think about place and setting and location on earth as it is in heaven. Two locations, heaven and earth, a relationship between them as it is, a metaphor, a simile more precisely, half of a syllogism that could be earth is to heaven as blank is to blank. Here is to eternity present and future, life is to death. What is this location, this placement, this relationship that is in this second sentence, this place of earth as it relates to the place of heaven? I would venture to say that most of us read this ancient text inserting two commas, two breaths, one after thy kingdom come and the other after earth which then allows us to imagine a second place of location, namely heaven. We pray this line like, thy kingdom come, comma, on earth, comma, as it is in heaven. Our ears hear this as a differentiating of places where we would like the kingdom to be, which is to say kingdom, realm, presence, peace, reign. These are the places where we would like this to come, to bring God's reign to earth, just as God's presence is in heaven. Our understanding is generally that the as is really an end. And A-N-D end, that is really an E-N-D end, because what we're ultimately talking about is eternity and our place in it, not just in the future, but today. And our understanding is not wrong when we think geographically. And it does have a lot to do with the breath we breathe into the prayer. But there is another complication for this prayer in English. It's the it. The it, that tricky little pronoun and its reference. What we think we mean when we pray this line is when we say it, we mean thy rain come on earth as thy reign, it, comes in heaven. The it in our prayer refers to rain, we generally think, and this keeps earth and heaven separate. This it separates us. It exiles us on earth as far away from heaven. It creates two separate places, two separate spheres, two different universes. But what if what if the it is not a pronoun for kingdom? In English, pronouns should refer to their closest noun, otherwise we get confused. And there's enough confusion going on all around us. The closest antecedent here in this sentence is not kingdom, but earth. And in good English, the noun to which the pronoun it refers should be earth. So let's try the sentence now. Thy kingdom come on earth as earth is in heaven. Do you notice the shift? Earth is no longer a separate place from heaven. It's part of heaven. Heaven thus becomes the whole of creation, the place where God dwells and earth is part of this. Thy reign in Brooklyn as Brooklyn is in New York. Thy love come to my apartment as it is in my building. Thy peace come on earth as earth is in heaven. The line between life and death suddenly becomes not so black and white. It is, as Belinda Carlisle knows, as if heaven can be a place on earth. 
And one of my favorite seminary professors is a scholar of the Protestant Reformation. As he was so influential, you'll forgive me if I repeat a story or two over time. And one of the backdrops, one of the precursors to the Reformation that he talks about is the mysticism and the intercession of the church of the medieval period. In that time, the dead were not a separate class, a distinction, he writes. They were more like an age group. There were baby boomers and there were seniors and there were the dead and we all did things with them. You talked to them and oftentimes they talked back. You prayed for them and you asked them to pray for you too. When there was a system of purgatory and limbo and heaven and hell, you knew that the dead salvation was still being worked through, that they were still very much alive and going through the motions of living. Many of us still have faith in this life after death, even if we're not as certain as some of our apostolic forebearers about bodily resurrection, and more notably, about which body in particular might be resurrected for eternity. Can I please have my 20-year-old one rather than my 70-year-old one? The point of Professor Cameron was similar to Ezekiel's and similar also to mine today. It is the very promise of the gospel itself as affirmed by Paul, neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God made known in Jesus. Ezekiel's vision showed a people in exile. It showed these people that were lost, that were transversing a new world, finding new ways of being, taken from their city, living in new homes, living only with what really mattered. It showed them that God is with them, always, not just in some faraway temple. And the medieval Christians sensed that the dead were still among them, separate only through a thin veil, was a way of keeping heaven and earth very much connected. And Jesus' prayer offers us a way to move between the living of this world and the next. Because this world, world without commas, is already a part of heaven. So what if earth is already in heaven? What if we each create a little bit of heaven on earth each and every day? In our living and in our loving making God's reign visible in the small ways we go about living and loving each and every day. May this be our practice for nothing, not life nor death, will separate you from the love of God that is present wherever you are. As God's presence is on earth, as it is in heaven. Amen.
thank you, Cynthia and Faye. Good morning and welcome to West End Church. In this moment where not much feels good and right, logging on and seeing all your faces and worshiping together, that feels good and right. If you're visiting today, welcome to our community. We are so glad you are here. We've just finished our first full week of virtual programming, and we're so grateful for the adaptability of this crowd. Our new 9 a.m. weekly prayer time with Pastor Will has been life-giving for me, I know personally. My kids have enjoyed continuing kids club and youth group, and many others are holding down the fort at adult ed, spirit talk, taze, and book club. We are a church alive. We are all living into a new way of being together in community, and it is good. Once again, after service today, we will be holding virtual coffee hour. So if you have time when we finish, uh, grab a cup of coffee, maybe you have a pastry, maybe like me, you've been baking a lot uh, and, and you have some things to get rid of. Um, and then join us back behind the screen for some fellowship. We continue to be a praying community here at West End, and we will lift our prayers together a little bit later in the service. If there's something tender on your heart or words of gratitude or thanksgiving you would like to share, you can begin entering them on the chat in the chat box now. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday and we will be here together virtually again. In lieu of palms, bring your house plants into your screen view with you next week. We will use our imaginations to translate all that green into a procession of palms. All Holy Week and Easter Sunday worship will be held virtually as well. Information about Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday services will come later this week. So keep an eye on your inbox for Thursday's email from Pastor Will. If you're visiting us today and you want to be included on that email list, you can send an email to pastors at westendchurch.org. And I think they, uh, they put that address in the group chat next to us. We've reached the point in our service where we offer our gifts in furtherance of all the good work God is doing both at and through West End. You can make a virtual contribution using the link in the chat. Uh, you can also continue mailing in um, your pledges as you typically would to the office as well. Um, we are able to get those. Thank you everyone for being here. Be well.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. As we settle into our spirits and into our seats for a time of prayer, I ask you to consider special prayers for the family of Joseph Wesley Ziegler, beloved member of this congregation for over 50 years. Joseph passed into eternal rest yesterday afternoon. I also, I also ask you to hold the family and friends of Mark Bloom in prayer. Mark is a dear friend of Deborah Monk's. He died yesterday of complications that arose from COVID-19 this week. Let us continue in prayer together. God, we do not know. We cannot say where we're headed. And God, we don't know where we are. So we begin our prayer together this morning with the things that are unsure. May we begin with this honesty, merciful God. Whether it's fatigue or fear or sorrow, may we not hide it. God, meet us as we are this morning. And as we do so, as we come before you, God, without pretense, may we feel you near. May we remember that you are near. And so we ask for help. Turn your face to us, O Divine One. Do not leave us in our hour of need. Protect this community. Keep watch over those who are sick. Lift up the spirits and the lives of those who have left us, those who are gone. May they not be gone. May they remind us of their presence. And God, may there be even more grace possible than we understand and we know, sweet spirit of life. And may our faith and may your overwhelming mercy meet in prayer, in voiced prayer, God, we also lift up the voices of this community and the needs written down by the people of this church. We pray, God, with Elizabeth Winthrop for her friend's great nephew, a three-year-old with Down syndrome and leukemia who has now contracted coronavirus. He and his mother are quarantined together in a Brooklyn hospital. We pray a prayer of gratitude with Sandy for good health and prayers for us all. We pray with Jennifer a prayer of gratitude and for protection. As her daughter was not accepted at the college, she applied for early admission and the difficulty she's facing. But it gives her a chance to help her and it's an opportunity for her to begin to know God. May she know that she would be fine no matter what happens. And thank you God for the opportunity that you show her to work through it. And with Jennifer, we pray that you protect her from envy. We pray with Sally, prayers for everyone who is feeling unwell and uncertain, and a special prayer for Dave, who has been sick for a week now with a fever and a cough, and who is still at home, and a prayer of gratitude that arises there. We pray with Andrea Huguenin that she will get to be united again with her whole family in Switzerland. 
You pray with Julia, gratitude for the life of Joe Ziegler, a longtime member of this congregation who died yesterday morning in hospice. Joe faithfully served this congregation and the larger church in every way he could and all the many ways that he did. God, we pray with Michael, prayers for his doorman, Roman, Ramon Alonso, who was ill with the coronavirus. And prayers, too, for consistory as they make big decisions this week for the entire collegiate community. We pray with Esau for Irene Weiss's family, who is an employee of the Department of Transportation, who passed away this week after contracting the virus. We pray with Pat for their girlfriend Ginny, who lost her mom this week due to age, not to the virus. May she rest in peace. We pray with Reverend Will for the life of Joseph W. Ziegler, beloved member of this congregation who passed into eternal rest. And we pray for Roger Louis Beaumont, whose battle with COVID-19 is not looking good. We pray with Nathan for his family in prison during this crisis that they are able to stay healthy and safe. And we pray a prayer of gratitude with Priscilla, who thanks Andrea and the pastors of this church. Just thank you. We pray with Beth, who simply says, COVID, day seven, please send healing prayers. Our prayers are with you, Beth. We pray with Jana, who play, prays protection over those of her CBS colleagues who must be physically present each day to the network on the air. We pray with Catherine for her friend Lex, who is ill and quarantined in New Orleans. We pray with Albert for his brother Steve, who was diagnosed with multiple myeloma several weeks ago. We pray a prayer with Danielle of gratitude for the blossoming tree outside her window and all of the signs of spring around us. Pray with Priscilla. May God comfort Allison and her sons. She served with Joseph for years and he will be missed. And we have lost a great one in Mark Bloom. May his friends and family find some grace in this tragedy. We pray with Shannon. Prayers for all those working from the front lines in hospitals caring for the sick. Prayers for all their families. May they be safe and find peace. <laughs> We pray with Reverend Bridget for Beth, diagnosed with COVID and suffering at home. From Emily, we pray with gratitude from Emily Simpson. Emily is in her sixth day of quarantine without symptoms after testing positive. And our prayers are with you. We pray with Willem. God, give me strength to get through today, and after that, the next day, and every day after that. We also pray with Carol and Doug. For my dad and Will's grandfather and all the residents of Spring Arbor to remain safe. Oh, sweet breath of life. These are the spoken prayers of this morning. And there are so many more unspoken. There's so many more bubbling up within us. These are the words that we have today. So teach us the words yet to come. 
Teach us the things that are stuck. Teach us the things that will find their way. And give us patience, God, as these words appear. And forgive us if they don't. So we also pray, using these unique and special words of one of our favorite prayers. Bring your attention to the chat box where we will say this morning's special Lord's Prayer together. Saying together in one voice as one gathered community. Loving God within and around us, we revere you. We seek to live life as you would want us to do, with love and respect for all people and all things in the universe. May we find each day sufficient for our needs and find forgiveness when we do wrong, just as we forgive those who do wrong to us. In times of trouble, may we center our lives in you, for your being is love which comes with strength and with beauty throughout eternity. Amen. A closing hymn this morning will be Go, My Children, With My Blessing to the familiar tune of All Through the Night. Sing along if you know it. And though we may be muted and far apart, let's sing together in one voice as one. Thank you, Faye and Allison and Cynthia. Remember when we could go places? Remember when we could go forth from this place with blessing? Today, we stay forth in this place, also with blessing, knowing that nowhere you can go, no tiny unexplored space of our two small apartments is without blessing. Blessing of God who creates and knows and loves each of you. Blessings of God who makes no distinction between earth, for it is part of heaven, and whose presence is always near. Stay, God's children. Stay in the love and the blessing of God who creates you, names you, and loves you. This and every day. Amen.
Sam is going to unmute you now for the cacophony, the reminder of what the Tower of Babel once sounded like as we attempt to communicate words of greeting and welcome over this virtual coffee hour. You can type and chat 